Is the climate change controversy close to a conclusion? The Brick Moon Meteorological Laboratory, with the assistance of Miskatonic University researchers, has developed a device that reportedly can predict both the impacts of imminent catastrophic climate change and the corresponding necessary countermeasures. WHN's Ward Alcove has the story. BMML's Dr. Celery Salt says the climate change prognosticator can calculate with a surprising degree of accuracy the impending repercussions of the cumulative environmental effects of mankind on the Earth's atmosphere. Researchers say the CCP uses data aggregated from centuries of weather records using abacus models and projects the ultimate outcomes on an easily readable printed display. The instrument with similar precision simultaneously determines what immediate measures must be taken in order to offset the predicted effects. During an exclusive tour of the laboratory, I watched as Dr. Salt demonstrated a prototype. The entirely mechanical device, using proprietary technology, is operated by spinning a single knob. Doctor, is this prediction completely accurate and conclusive? Absolutely. Would you like to give it a spin? I twirled the knob, which to my untrained eye appeared to be a drawer pull reclaimed from an old cabinet. Did I do this right? Oh, yes, yes, a remarkable result. So, how is it possible for worldwide flooding and drought to occur simultaneously? Well, that's a good question. I could explain it, but you would have to be an intelligent scientist like me to understand concepts such as the difference between weather and climate, the fact that only human activity could be responsible for an apparent global average rise in temperature of one degree Celsius over the past 100 years, and which data points can be safely excluded to produce hockey stick graphs that look neat, clean, and indisputable. Besides, the majority of climatologists are in agreement, and the rest are either kooks or they work for big business. So that settles it. It is simply not possible for a qualified scientist to misinterpret the data. Dr. Salt continued the demonstration with several more spins of the wheel. Among the results were hundreds of hurricanes and giant insects, with solutions ranging from population control to the remission of two-thirds of everyone's income. Finally, upon seeing an exceptionally curious result pop up, I had to again question the veracity of this allegedly infallible device. He apologized and hastily escorted me out of the facility while muttering something about national security, non-disclosure policies, and a forthcoming press release. Ward, I couldn't help but notice the apparent lack of technology in the laboratory. What's up with that? Well, Steve, in keeping with the institution's absolute zero carbon footprint philosophy, the BBML is choose all electrical and electronic appliances, including computers. This policy restricts researchers to the use of only primitive mechanical devices such as abacuses and coconut shell telephones connected with hemp twine. Now that's what I call green. Thanks, Ward, for the enlightening report on this new Earth-friendly technology. And if the doctor's attitude is prevalent among his fellow intelligentsia, I'm sure we can all come to the same conclusion. The time for questioning and debate is over. Science has indeed settled. Coming up next, a new government-funded study looks into left-handed life jackets for polar bears. And then we check on the...